we, we implemented RESTConf draft 02 because that was what we had available to us at the time. The draft apparently 11 was when we started to implement the new version, hoping that it would be sort of our standardized. Since then, we've had draft 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and apparently 17 as of today. Um, and the claim is that 15 and 16 are incompatible. Uh, uh, so that's fun. Um, in addition to that, um, RESTConf um, pa for past certain drafts um, uh, uh, requires Yang one like it, for reasons that I don't understand. They've decided to standardize that that the later drafts must use Yang one one as their um, as their they're not designed for Yang one and we only have Yang one in our in the system. And I think that's backward compatible, which is to say that like you can take a Yang a Yang one model is a Yang one one model, so you so nothing needs to change, but there are properties which you might get bitten by. Um, so this is sort of, you know, there's, there's a question of sort of how, and so we have this weird bastardized implementation right now which implements draft 15 but using Yang 1.0. <laughs> and I don't entirely understand the details of where that comes in um, and, and where we make essentially, essentially, we essentially have a deviant implementation of RESTConf draft 15, which is maybe better than not. Um, and then, uh, um, and so the question is, do you get rank one one support, and how does that work? And so I think this all ties into sort of I, I, my, my question would be, when do we want to advertise that it exists? And you know, Ryan, you're saying, you know, I don't care. Anybody can advertise it whenever. I, but I think there is sort of the question of, as a project, you know, when do we want to tell downstream consumers? I mean, I agree that like, you know, if, um, you know, right, if if um, if Brocade wants to ship, you know, RESTConf draft 15 and say that all of our downstream people should fix it and we'll support it, that should be totally our decision. But I think there's a broader decision in open daylight, which is at what point do we like tell the advisory group and it suggests that people start picking it up and using it? And that seems much more complicated. Um, and I don't know the answer. So, so, so Robert, so, so, so what's your take, Robert? When should we, when should we advertise that the new RESTCOMF draft exists uh, to, to the broader world? So I think we should advertise it right now with the caveat that the spec is moving and we should be up updating our SRs to always implement the latest one. And, 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 and we would, and so. I mean, we, we definitely don't want to get locked into something that will be uh, superseded. But then again, we want to drive adoption of it. I mean. Um, and um, I mean, so and, and I guess my intuition is that advertising it with the notice that it's a moving target uh, probably will cause probably actually slow adoption over time, actually compared to not telling anybody. So uh, that's my, my that's my intuition, which is that, like it will mean that when you eventually throw the switch, people will be so used to you telling them that it's a moving target, they won't even switch when the, when it's finalized. So. So this may not be a, a long-term good plan, but for so, f so for example, for SR1, I think we should just break the API and ship 16 and hope that it doesn't further change incompatibility. I, I can reach out to, to the draft after, uh, uh, authors and see whether there are any more breakages on, on, on their scopes, but until it passes the... Um, ITF last call, well, it, 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 it is a fair target, so it may move. Um, and, and so I guess, and, and I, fair enough. So I mean, like, I guess that's fine. So, th so in this case, I mean, I don't have any problem with saying this exists and it's, and it's moving target if people, um, my, my intuition is that if you act eventually want people to move to it, telling them that it's a moving target for a bunch of releases until it's finalized is probably actually going to make them less likely to move to it in the long run because they'll be used to it being broken uh, um, as opposed to waiting until it actually works and then telling them about it. Um, right. But so, so um, advertising the fact that we are implementing it is important. Um, should people use it as the primary API? Hell no. Okay. Um, should, if, if, if their product timelines essentially aligns as a, well, I, I will be shipping 
a product based on whatever the latest SR is going to be in 12 months, then it is probably a good, good idea to use it. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not the, the person making that decision. And, and so, okay, so, so, so the, the second question is sort of, you know, should we deprecate or remove draft two? And if so, when? And, 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 and I, I'm gonna fall on the never side. Uh, but. Uh, so, uh, okay, that, that would be a historic mistake, I think. So I, I would really like to split that question into two. And I would say that deprecate draft 02 with the first release that ships uh, the RFC implementation. And then the question when to remove it is probably a question towards the advisory group, or oh, rather user advisory group. Um, but I would hate for, for them to come back with the answer of five years or something. I mean, so so I think this is where this is where we were when you walked in. But, but I mean, my personal take is, um, um, uh, this migra so the migrating off of draft zero two will make the eighty cell to MD cell transition look trivial. Um, and, so and, so and I'll take your word for it. No, and the, re the reason why is not because it's technically hard, but because at least with the AD cell to MD cell transition, you could enumerate all of the changes you needed to make. Um, and that was true because for two, for two really compelling reasons. Open Daylight, Open Daylight was smaller and less used then, so there was just less code and less code essentially, especially outside of Open Daylight. And two, it was all in a language that was, a single language that was well typed that you could go check to see where it was. Whereas, you know, with RESTCOM Draft 02, like, how, how, how would I look at, you know, if I'm a customer, like how would I tell, right? Like, how do I know so, what I'm done? <laughs> so, so um, really the, so, so the, the, the deprecation as soon as we uh, implement the RFC makes sense, right? So we, we can agree on that. Um, well, I mean, I, I think that the second question to me would, it would, I mean, so if you asked me, I mean, like, what's the cost of leaving it there? I mean, like, well, and there's maintenance code, uh, uh, cost, and the code is really ugly. <laughs> I mean, so, anyways, I mean, I, so, so if you decided never for part two, then you wouldn't deprecate it, right? Um, because if you're, I mean, like, by, almost by definition, it's going to stay there, you're going to maintain it. Um, um, I, I think you should be, so, so if, if, well, deprecate may not be the right word in that conversation. But you definitely, definitely want to communicate very clearly that while it's still there, it's still supported, we will not be touching it, we will not be evolving it, um, and you better use the RFC one. Because it's something that we, we support only because of history, not because we really want to. Is there any way to map uh, the existing O2 uh, URLs to the, the new convention? Um, so the problem, so, so if you. The payloads didn't change, I don't think. Well, but the headers did, okay. the, the, uh, the content types did, and uh, the, the URL uh, structure has, yes, has completely changed, yeah. right? So, so all, all of that needs to be get taken care of by, by a compatibility layer. Which could be implemented in a load balancer. I mean, I, mean, I don't know. My, 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 and my guess is Ryan will echo this, but I, but I, I, and and, but you should tell me if I'm crazy. My, my guess is that, like, it, it's gonna, it's impossible to enumerate all. Like, like things are gonna randomly. Like when we do this, if we do, we would take it out. Like things are gonna randomly break. Like like so, you're, like six months later, somebody's Perl script they wrote, which basically you know did something simple to operate you know in a dev and he's, he's in, you know, with their controller, they're going to run it and it's going to not work, and they're going to be and and you know there's no way to have known where that Perl script was. Right? That Perl script was like sitting on somebody's laptop somewhere, and like you know and there's something like that. So enumerating all of the ways that like the, all of the things that need to change is going to be I mean, literally impossible, right? Um, that's true, but but con uh, um, countering your argument, um, the question is how well have you tested y your upgrade that it fits your y y your environment? And if you left out a Perl script on, on some poor devs, 
machine, <laughs> then you, you probably have much deeper problems than, than, right. than the, the upgrade itself, which was painful. Well, it becomes an impetus then, because then they're going to have to change a ton of code in order to upgrade. So, so th that's why I wanted to split the deprecation and removal, because deprecation is quite clear or communicating that you should not be using this. Um, so what I'm saying is that that's not clear to me, because it's not clear to me that you can ever remove it. And if you can never remove it, then it's not at all clear that you should signal to anybody they should stop using it. Like that's, I mean, <laughs> that, that's, so, I mean, so open I, stack okay, maintains okay, I, several Colin, versioned Col APIs. Colin, <laughs> yeah, um, can we not go into that comparison? Okay. Um, because uh, literally, I mean, if somebody steps up and says, I will um, uh, support this forever, then I'm fine. But if that guy doesn't support it, what do we do? And it is that code which will not have exposure. It will lower the exposure because as, as the RFC is, is uh, adopted, more and more people will use that RFC. So essentially, your Perl script will be talk, talk, uh, talking to a code base which is not usually used. So it's probably not as well tested. So all, break, uh, all hell will break loose. So I, I, I strongly believe that the never part is not really a valid um, answer from sound software engineering perspective. I mean, maybe not never, but like. So, so I mean, how about like this? The, the so, so for, for, so, so for, for the removal process, depending on what the advisory group says, um, in any case, I think we should go the, 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 the route where we don't flat out remove it, but, but we disable it for, for, uh, by default and maybe ship to releases and then remove it based on the feedback we get. Yeah, so, so I mean, yeah, I guess we, we did, I mean, so that, that might, I mean, maybe a reasonable compromise is disable it. <laughs> when you do a REST conf query, you'll get a message that says, to enable this feature, please type this, and then ask people <laughs> if they fixed it. But the answer is they're not gonna fix it. Um, I mean, like, <laughs> Well, so, so here's the thing. If you, if you really um, return a 500 or something, um, I bet there will be a bug report coming in because that this used to work, it doesn't. And then you point them towards release notes and uh, you engage them in a conversation about the upgrade. But really, I, I mean, we want to get rid of multiplicity of APIs um, because I mean, they are confusing. I mean, I, I, there are uh, uh, there are plenty of people that will tell you that deprecating API that you know, right? Like deprecating APIs is evil, um, right? I mean, especially public published APIs that people have coded into a bunch of different languages in a way that isn't easy to refactor. Um, I mean, there are there are lots and lots of organizations out there whose policy is like we will support all of our old released APIs. Um, that is. Are we that organization? <laughs> I mean, Not that, according that, to our current API rules. No, but this is, I think, a different, I mean, this is a different and more complicated case than we've had in the past. Well, it's more widely deployed. It's still an externally consumable API, and the, the rules say that we need to support concurrently for, for one <laughs> version. It is our choice to commit to anything else. Uh, uh, we are not required to do that. I, 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 I feel I where you're coming from. I entirely from. agree with the technical interpretation of. I mean, like we're not. The truth of the matter is, like the the first thing is a made up rule anyway, right? I mean, like uh, <laughs> all the rules I, uh, are I mean, made like, up, right? right? <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, I'm with you, but, but it's a particularly made up rule. It's not like it came down from the board and the charter. It was a, th it's not even a thing that like was voted on as an overarching goal of, of the, of the project. It was actually, it's just a baked into our release plans, right? Literally, that's the only place it's specified. Well, it's, it's our API contract to API contracts. So, but that's, and I think it's helped us, and I'm not saying that's the wrong thing to do, but you know, but I think, you know, I, and, and I guess the answer maybe is, and since we're two minutes before the end of things is, you know, I think the answer is, um, we, we need to talk to the advisory group and figure out what, you know, how, how long we expect people to need it. And I don't know what they're going to say. I mean, I, I've talked to one 
very heavy user of ODL. He said one release. I thought he was being optimistic there, <laughs> like extremely optimistic. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, but I, I think from from um, fr from the trenches, um, we want to remove this. No, we I mean want I, to, to I, I get I get here. I get that there is a trade off between code we have to maintain and pain we have to put our users through, and and I just don't necessarily know that I agree with the point you want to exist in that space. I mean, like, there, there's an obvious trade-off so, there. So obviously, and this is this is a really easy conversation. the The conversation becomes much harder when we start upgrading core models in heavily incompatible ways. And at that point, really ha having the default answer of never is simply not an option. Well, that's different because um, that's bas basically forking the the open daylight. It is. So, so, so wait. So I, I didn't quite follow what you're, what you're. So, so, you're, so you're basically saying. It, it, so, it should we never remove inventory model? Uh, no, I think we need to remove the inventory model. But that's, but that's. How is that's, it different from deployment based uh, from RESTConf? Okay, no, not rest everybody. So everybody is using every RESTConf. Not everybody is ev is using inventory. inventory. But um, the installed base is is innumerable for both items. So yeah, but one of one of them is sort of it's a functional unit which you can understand and describe to people, and sort of they have some idea of what code might touch it. The other one is like every single rest rest call you ever make is going to need to change in every single script everywhere, with no sort of bound or understanding of where to go look. Like like it's easier to find code if you can functionally describe what that code is doing than it is to find code which is could be anywhere, could touch anything. And I, I, I see where you're coming from. It, I mean, I, I do. Um, I, I, we'll see. <laughs> the HTTP, uh, the HTTP calls and the URLs. I mean, it's it's the it's very difficult. It, it really is about browsing the URLs because I mean the inventory model translates to a particular URL, uh, which changes if you change the model. Or the same with the RESTConf, right? So I mean, uh, it, the mechanisms to identify where to make changes would actually be the same for both cases. Well, assuming that you have that code, you, you know about that code, right? And, we, and, and if you don't, then you have a larger problem than this. I, yeah. But, yeah. I, knowing about my code that touches the inventory model seems easier. Well, <laughs> you can do a recursive uh, fgrep on your home directory <laughs> and probably find all your code that's touching it. Yeah, right? but, so, but that's the question is, I mean, like, is there a good, I mean, like, may, maybe that's an answer, which is if we provided a good tool, which would basically go through and basically point it at a directory and literally search through the whole directories for a regex pattern that finds draft 02 URLs, like, uh, that's a more, that, you know. Slash operational slash. <laughs> slash config slash and it's just f grab it doesn't have to be i guess i mean and so will that and and the question is does that and then do you, do you suggest other things i mean that's sort of i mean how would you know when you're done that's sort of the other problem is like you know then you have to parse we also have mailing archives wikis <laughs> i mean so that's that's be, a whole separate we uh, have yeah. an, apparently an ask site that i didn't really even know about <laughs> that the good news oh, really? is that that's <laughs> going to be I think that's, that's going to be decommissioned. So at least we'll have one last thing to. Oh, well, yeah, just my, my concern is people are going to go out and look for it. I mean, when I run to a, an issue with some third party software, I, I Google it right away. That's what I, that's my method of debugging. <laughs> I don't want to be pointing people at wrong material. Yeah, and probably un, um, disconnected from this, but, but really showcasing the problem is that if we choose to adopt standards or emerging standards, um, as soon as possible, we will end up in, in these kind of dilemmas every time uh, that, that standard matures. And, and, and at that point, it really is not a valid option to not remove support. I, but I think I, 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 I entirely agree with that. I just think that like RESTConf is, an is, 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 is a deeper and more ingrained and more pervasive case than a lot of other things, right? Like it, it affects every single person who has ever used Open Daylight in almost every way they've interacted with it. <laughs> Depends whether you're talking to open daylight through RESTCOM. <laughs> if, you're, <laughs> if you're well if you're if you're deploying a, an agent to actually interact with MDSAL, which is a valid deployment issue, you don't care about RESTCOM. 
And I, I know of installed bases I, which do it this way. My, my guess is if you, if you divided the number of people that use Open Daylight without sure. RESTConf by, by the number of install bases, the, the number is indistinguishable. Sure, but one. we're in group algebra now. <laughs> so, I right. do agree that we immediately want to tell people that they should move to the new draft and start learning it, but I don't, know, I, I don't think our material is there yet. The published uh, you know, standard, not, not the draft. When it gets there. Sure, but I think there is sort of the question of as a project, you know, when do we want to tell downstream consumers? I mean, I agree that like, you know, if, um, you know, right, if if um, if Brocade wants to ship, you know, RestConf Draft 15, and say that all of our downstream people should fix it, and we'll support it, that should be totally our decision. But I think there's a broader decision in Open Daylight, which is at what point do we like tell the advisory group and suggest that people start picking it up and using it, and that seems much more complicated. Um, and I don't know the answer. So, 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 Robert. So, 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 what's your take, Robert? When should we, when should we advertise that the new RestConf draft exists uh, to to the broader world? So, I think we should advertise it right now, with the caveat that the spec is moving, and we should be up updating our SRs to always implement the latest one. And 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 we would and so. I mean, we, we definitely don't want to get locked into something that will be uh, superseded. But then again, we want to drive adoption of it. I mean. Um, and um, I mean, so and, and I guess my intuition is that advertising it with the notice that it's a moving target uh, probably will cause, probably actually slow adoption over t actually compared to not telling anybody. So uh, that's my, my, that's my intuition, which is that, like, it will mean that when you eventually throw the switch, people will be so used to you telling them that it's a moving target, they won't even switch when, the, when it's finalized. So, so this may not be a, a long-term good plan, but for, so, f so for example, for SR1, I think we should just break the API and ship 16 and hope that it doesn't further change incompatibility. I, I can reach out to, to the draft after, uh, authors and see whether there are any more breakages on, on, on their scopes, but until it passes the um, ITF last call, I think that's backward compatible, which is to say that like you can take a Yang a Yang one zero model is a Yang one one model, so you so nothing needs to change, but there are properties which you might get bitten by. Um, so this is sort of you know there's sort of the question of sort of how and so we have this weird bastardized implementation right now, which implements draft fifteen but using Yang one <laughs> and I don't entirely understand the details of where that comes in, um, and and where we make essentially we essentially have a deviant implementation of RESTCOM draft fifteen, which is maybe better than not. Um, and then, uh, um, and so the question is, do you get rank 1-1 support and how does that work? And so I think this all ties into sort of, I, I, my, my question would be, when do we want to advertise that it exists? And you know, Ryan, you're saying, you know, I don't care, anybody can advertise it whenever. We, we implemented RESTCONF draft 02 because that was what we had available to us at the time. The draft apparently 11 was when we started to implement the new version, hoping that it would be sort of our standardized. Since then, we've had draft 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and apparently 17 as of today. Um, and the claim is that 15 and 16 are incompatible. Uh, uh, so that's fun. Um, in addition to that, um, RESTCONF um, pa for past certain drafts um, uh, uh, requires Yang 1, like it, for reasons that I don't understand, they've decided to standardize that, that the later drafts must use Yang 1.1 as their, um, as their, they're not designed for Yang 1.0 and we only have Yang 1.0 in our in the system. 